So I wanted to share a little on what happens during the initial stages of a heart awakening, especially if you're identifying as a light worker on the divine feminine journey, so a way short or a messenger of some kind. In truth, everyone that opens up to their heart space and to heart-centered consciousness is a light worker because as you open up to the truth of your divine nature and you live from that and you shine your light in this world, you not only affect your your yourself, but you also affect the collective. So in truth, everyone that opens up to heart-centered consciousness is a light worker. But this message is specifically for the divine feminine that has been identified as a light worker her whole life, as a way shower or messenger, even before it manifested in the 3D for them, they've known it their whole life that they're here to share something, they're here to contribute and make an impact in a big way. They're here to, you know, really shine their light in a way that's unique to them. And this has been, you know, some form of a mission for them. This is something that's really embedded in their soul blueprint for them to partake in in this life experience. And so if this is you, then this message will likely resonate, and I would love to know if it does. But oftentimes, these divine feminines that resonate as a light worker already have very open upper chakras, very overactive upper chakras. So their heart chakra, their third eye, and, and their crown chakra, their throat chakra. Although there tends to be a lot of uh, blockages around the throat chakra to work through. They have, in general, higher chakras that are overactive. So they have a wide open crown chakra that tends to open up early on. They're very intuitive. They are able to open up as a channel. And their heart chakra is very open as well. So they come from a very loving place of unconditionally loving people, seeing the light within everyone, being very forgiving, being very accepting and very understanding. And in this 3D reality, that's a beautiful thing. The heart opening, that's that's the heart's ultimate gift to humanity is being able to unconditionally love and see the light within everyone, even when they're only reflecting back their their darkness or their shadow because they are themselves possibly unable to see the light within themselves. You have the ability and the gift and the blessing to be able to see the light within everyone. And this is very beautiful. It's, it makes you very compassionate, very forgiving, very accepting of others. The issue lies in being able to fully ground this energy into the 3D and also be able to embody this and be supported in this 3D environment. Because if you have overactive upper chakras before you really have developed your lower chakras, which tend to be blocked with this divine feminine, then you have a tendency to be able to be taken advantage of because of the lack of boundaries that would be put into place by having strong lower chakra chakras really you know developed lower chakras so you'll have the tendency to be very open and loving and unconditional and in acceptance of others even when there should be a stronger sense of self So your individualized self that's incarnated into this reality in order to have those healthy boundaries and protect your your own individual human expression. And so this is the two sides of the coin. This is unity on one side and separation and individual expression on the other side, right? 
So your three lower chakras are what connect you to the physical realm and your earthly experience, your human experience. The three higher chakras are what connect you to the, the subtle realms and your divine presence. And your heart chakra is the bridge between those two. And you are the conduit. You are the vessel. You are the channel. But in order to fully open and allow yourself to be the channel of love and abundance and and prosperity and compassion and fully anchor that into the 3D, the lower chakras need to be developed as well so that you can fully embody your divine sovereignty, not only as a being of light, but also as your human expression. This journey is about fully coming into union with that internally and expressing as a divinely worthy being, fully, fully divine and fully, fully human simultaneously. You are both. And in essence, you are absolutely no thing, nothing simultaneously. So you are both, you are everything, and you are also simultaneously nothing because you are the essence that makes up all things, which is not a thing. So you are no thing while simultaneously you are everything, which becomes apparent on this journey. But I'm going to save that for another recording. And I wanted to get back to the three lower chakras and specifically what starts to happen as you're guided to fully integrate your sacral chakra. So your sacral chakra is the seat of your presence. It's the seat of your expression. It's more related to your earthly expression than it is to your divinity. It's related to your human earthly expression, which your divinity, your divine expression animates this form. So there is no disconnect here. It's all connected. It's all one. But these three lower chakras, your chakras act as kind of like portals. They're not they're not a hundred percent in the subtle realm because they affect your physical organs and your body, but they're not actually physical either. They're like energy vortexes within your body. And so these three lower chakras as they develop you will experience uh certain symptoms in this three D world. Specifically, as your heart is beginning to open and your ego is beginning to dissolve, what happens is the, f the floodgates are opened. It's like your heart space is open and it's been like, like a volcano with a lot of suppressed emotions that now are bubbling up to the surface. And at first, when the ego starts to dissolve and you're beginning to open in the heart space, it's like that volcano erupting where it's just emotions are pouring out of you and this may be experienced like a lot of crying a lot of crying uncontrollable um, bouts of crying and sadness and you may not even know where this crying or sadness are, is coming from and sometimes it'll be over very specific things that you're completely aware of that you're processing finally um, so pain sadness and things like that uh, but sometimes it's going to be over things that you have no conscious awareness of. It just feels like it, it's just a natural response to your heart opening the suppressed pain and sadness that's not only necessarily from this lifetime, but can be from previous lifetimes as your soul has incarnated over and over and over again and is this vehicle of expression and this vehicle of experience. You've carried all of this forward. And in this lifetime, you're ready to purge this and bring this all into, into your heart space, but in the most harmonious way where you're fully, fully connected and fully, fully free simultaneously. You're connected to all that is. You're completely free. And you're not only free as a being, but you're by 
moving into this heart-centered unity consciousness, but you're also free to express simultaneously in this lifetime your unique expression. And so back to the sacral chakra, this the chakra that's right below your navel. The chakra begins to open and purge as you open up to your heart centeredness and so this is where kind of like pandora's box opens and the volcano begins to erupt and you have uncontrollable bouts of emotions coming up and sadness and pain and loss and like i said some of it you know consciously why and some of it you don't but you're just and you're okay with it there's an acceptance of this it feels like the most natural thing you should be doing, even though you find yourself in the most ridiculous spaces, you know, crying like in your car, crying before work, after work, during work, on walks, like you're just purging, right? You're just purging. So a lot of crying is a is an earmark that this is happening and it feels very therapeutic. It feels very cleansing, purifying, Okay. And from my own experience, I can say it was a lot of sadness that came up first that just completely purged and released through through this process. And it took several months, like several months of this, like to the upwards of almost a year, like a good eight or nine months of this opening and purifying, opening and purifying And then what started to happen was there was this sense of resentment or anger that was still underlying all of this that began to come to the surface. And this is often an emotion that we're taught, especially as females, that it's not okay to express. It's not safe. And so what happens is this this starts to come up as well, this sensation of anger. And you may notice that you may have symptoms in the 3D world that are tied to the sacral chakra. So sacral chakra is, is, is tied to lower back and the female organs and the hips, for example. And so throughout this process, you may be guided to really open up your hips. I know I was for... The months leading up to this and during this whole process through fluid, open movements, fluid movements that really open up the hips. So I was really guided to, you know, ecstatic dancing and just moving my hips and opening up my hips, which were very tight. And I was having a lot of hip pain. And this pain I knew was related to the emotions that were purging from this specific area of my body where they were stored. And so you may be guided to open up your hips. You may be guided to move in a very fluid way that creates spaciousness within this part of the body. The sacral chakra is the water element, which is tied to emotions and And so as you create spaciousness in this area, you create spaciousness not only in the physical through like opening your hips and this fluid movement, then you also are creating space on the subtle realm because the both are connected. So on the energetic realm, you're creating space for these emotions to to surface, to be purged. And as I moved into experiencing more of the subtle layers of anger that were still residing in there and buried in there. I experienced other um, physical ailments with um, female organs and I knew exactly what it was and I'm not saying that if you're having any physical issues please go see a doctor and confirm and I did and I was having a very physical experience and it's very interesting because even as soon as I, I I already knew what it was what it was associated with and I knew where it was coming from and 
I was even guided to look it up in Louise Hay's book, you know, You Can Heal Your Life, where it associates the metaphysical meanings to, and the energetic meanings behind these ailments, and it immediately pointed to a blow to the feminine ego and an un, pain and, and, and anger that was being processed from a past partner. That's exactly what the ailment that I was experiencing represented. And so I took steps in the, you know, with the medical community to help ease that. But at the same time, I knew the source of it. I knew where it was coming from, which was emotional and energetic, which all ailments are but that's another recording as well and so this is nothing to be afraid of but do feel that if you need something checked out to check it out of course you need to take care of yourself and taking care of yourself is part of you know embracing your feminine energy but at the same time be aware and trust your intuition and and trust your guidance system which should be clearly speaking to you during this as well you truly truly trusting your inner knowing and your guidance because you become the guru on this journey you are the guru don't even listen to anything i'm saying and take it 100 percent at heart you listen to your heart and if it resonates then feel free to dive deeper with it and if it triggers you too, know and have enough awareness that if something ever that someone says is triggering you, that doesn't mean that the message is not for you. Be aware enough to know that your triggering is an invitation to go inward as well. So that being said, I just wanted to share that this is a natural process of your heart opening and that these energies do dissipate as you move through them, but you do have to move through them. This is a process and experiencing and allowing those emotions to be there, the pain and the sadness and the uncontrollable emotions that tend to come up and the, and the underlying anger. I wanted to especially point out the anger just because that is an emotion that is oftentimes very hard for females to, ex- to express because this sacral chakra when in its when it's underdeveloped is rooted in a sense of powerlessness and helplessness when you fully integrate your sacral chakra you're moving into a place of divine confidence and self-expression and really taking your power back but when it's underdeveloped there's a sense of powerlessness and there's a sense of helplessness there that keeps you from really wanting to speak your truth due to this sense of powerlessness and helplessness and and also keeps you from wanting to rock the boat and express your anger so there's two things here your your throat chakra which is blocked is very tied to your sacral chakra at this phase because you're unable to fully stand up for yourself speak your truth and share what you're feeling and really vocalize that and you know, really stand up for yourself because of this underlying fear and sense of powerlessness and helplessness, which also keeps you wanting to suppress your anger because anger would potentially create conflict and then rock the boat. And if you're not feeling safe and you're not feeling powerful and you're feeling helpless, then that's the last thing you want to do. So it's very important for this anger to surface and to be acknowledged and to be honored as sacred because as this anger rises to the surface to be released and expressed in a healthy way, it allows you to begin to take your power back so that you're not a doormat and you're not being taken advantage of because now you have fully integrated all of your chakras whereas before you were just hanging out primarily in your higher chakras being overly active while your lower chakras being underdeveloped which allows you to be 
available to people in a way that might not have the highest intentions for you and you can easily be manipulated, taken advantage of. When the anger starts to surface, it's can be scary because you're now facing those fears of powerlessness and helplessness and moving into your sacred confidence, your sacred confidence. And this is a necessary process. And when I say that this anger needs to be experienced and honored as sacred and expressed healthily, that doesn't mean that anger is projected out onto another person or intentionally causing harm or anything like that. That is not a healthy way to express your anger. A healthy way to express your anger is to acknowledge it and to understand the pain of where it came from and to see it and to sit with it and to allow it to be there and to recognize that you have been hurt and that you have experienced pain as a human, right? Your divine essence can never be hurt. Your divine essence is never wounded. Your divine essence of who you are at your root, 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 core, core, core is never hurt or wounded, but you are having this physical experience as a human self. And it's okay to honor that. You're here to honor both. You're here to fully express as a divinely worthy woman in this lifetime, fully divine and fully human. And that means accepting your humanness and not rejecting your humanness. And your humanness has been hurt and has had experienced a lot of pain and sorrow and loss and suffering. And it's okay to acknowledge that. And it's okay to acknowledge where this anger stems from because anger is really, it, it doesn't, it's not necessarily a core emotion. It's, it's kind of like a, a byproduct of these other underlying emotions such as sadness. And so it's okay to understand where the anger came from, the pain and the suffering and the sadness that caused this anger. And as you fully embrace it and allow it and see it as sacred and process it in a healthy way, you begin to take your power back. And by the way, simultaneously, while this sacral chakra is being integrated, you are also integrating your root chakra and your solar plexus chakra. But your root chakra and your solar plexus chakra are more masculine energy dominant chakras while your sacral chakra is a more feminine energy dominant chakra and so I specifically just wanted to speak to this one in this recording but I do have other recordings that speak to the initial stages of the of this awakening heart awakening Um, and I elaborate more on all three of the lower chakras and I will link that after this if you are interested in that so This is what wanted to come through today, and I hope it resonated. If it did, I would love to hear from you. If you would like support on your journey and you're ready to fully claim your divine sovereignty as a divinely worthy woman, I invite you to check out Embody the Empress, which is my divine feminine monthly immersion. You can check out all the details in the caption below this video. And until next time, I hope this finds you well. Namaste.